All of you put up a, a Google search page, if you would, on your... Did you say Buckminster Fuller? Buckminster Fuller. Will somebody find me Buckminster Fuller? This is Bucky. Bucky's most well known for geodesic domes. Somebody find me a geodesic dome. Bunch of them right there. So geodesic dome, you've seen them in radar installations around the world. You see them in playgrounds around the world. It's actually the most prolific architectural structure on the planet. It's the most lightweight, most all-encompassing structure, and it's the strongest physical structure based on nature's triangles. So Bucky was one of the geniuses of the last century. Some of you probably aren't quite old enough to have been trained in, the, in his thinking, but he gave us many inventions and ideas. Uh, you've heard Spaceship Earth as a concept before. Some of you are in chemistry, you heard about Bucky Balls or the Buckminster Fuller Reed. It looks exactly like a soccer ball. Again, really one of the geniuses of the last century. But I think one of the most important legacies he's, he left was a gaming simulation called the World Game. Uh, world Game is the exact opposite of World Game. So can somebody find me World Game mission statement? Okay, how do we make the world work for 100% of humanity in the shortest possible time through spontaneous cooperation without ecological damage or disadvantage to anyone? Great question, and I'm going to boil it down to how do we provide a decent living standard for everybody sustainably? And that's really the work that you're doing too, and, and he was way ahead of us uh, several decades ago. I don't have time to take you through the whole Q&A of how I'm going to get you to the answer, because I just have five minutes here. So I'm going to tell you the answer, and you're all going to go, yep, that's a good idea. The number one answer out of that question is clean energy for everybody on the planet. Clean energy for everybody. Now, you and I have plenty of energy. I just put this one up early. This is the Earth at Night map. Great image of our planet from a nighttime image. And because of those lights, we sometimes go, well, gosh, that's everybody on the planet. The truth is, all of those lights only make up 75% of the world. 25% don't have any lights at all. Most of those people are in Africa and actually India, China, in the Indian subcontinent, Pakistan, Bangladesh, half of the people in that five nation region have no electricity at all. And most of the people in Africa, actually 85%. So you and I, with all the lights here in North America and in Europe and in China, we're living real well. But we're the biggest polluters on the planet because of the energy choices that we've been given. So what's the percentage of our lights in the United States that come from fossil fuel? Or let's just say from coal. 50% in the United States and then a whole bunch of its natural gas, proportion hydro. What percentage of those lights in North America come from renewable? Only 3%, and I think it just bumped to 4 got to be wind, solar, and geothermal. You're all advocates for renewables. You all know that there hopefully will be, uh, will make that transition because that's part of our work as well. And that percentage is really the same for all of those lights, up there, whether it be in Europe or, or China. And uh, um, we can talk about competition between U.S. and China right now. I was just there last week, and in the wind and solar space, they are kicking our ass in five years. So now they, they don't have the environmental restrictions, is what you have to deal with. Uh, they have a lot of our money in terms of what they've amassed. Uh, but there's a good, healthy competition on what I, what I think Tom Friedman calls the Earth race. Uh, because it's going to be us and China to fix it. If we're going to fix it, we've got to do it together. This is an article from Time Magazine that just was last year talking about the most polluted cities on the planet. This is one city that is the worst bathed in, uh, in coal-fired generation and its pollutants. 16 of the 20 most polluted cities in the world are in China. So there are partners in making this change. So they got it. And they're growing like mad in wind and solar. This is, if you will, a map of the Genie game plan, is how do you turn all of these lights here today that are presently really fossil and nuclear and cause all sorts of atmospheric pollution and the other into lights coming from wind, solar, and geothermal, and then the people that have no electricity at all to get them up just to get a little bit. Solar based on the, on the hut, a little tiny wind farm so that they can get enough electricity themselves, grow into microgrids. Under all of these lights, what is the delivery system for electricity today? Grid. Wires. It's the grid. Whether you like it or not, that's the freeway for electricity. If somebody type in Dymaxian map with grid. That's the most accurate flat map of the world you've ever seen. We're used to seeing the Mercator projection where uh, Greenland is three times the size of Australia. The exact opposite is true. So if we find it on this map, there's Greenland and there's Australia. And so we're teaching our kids wrong stuff which is what Bucky also mentioned. So that map comes from this globe. It's an icosahedron, 20-sided equilateral polygon. If I unfold it a particular way, you get that map. 
And what's nice to start to see on that map is it looks what they call just like one world island and one world ocean. And so you can see where if you want to connect North America to Latin America, pretty easy through Central. There's only 90 miles between us and Russia at the Bering Strait. We know how to do underwater cable. We do that right now between um, Spain and Morocco. So underwater cables also between the UK and France. All of those lights have an interconnected grid underneath me today. That's just the messenger or the delivery system. What we put into that system is what causes uh, the environmental problems. Like he said, number one goal for the planet, and this, was, this is what got me started on this work 25 years ago. I'm an engineer by training in UCSD. Read a book, his last book, because he said, go read my book, Critical Path. Read book. On page 206, he said, number one strategy for the world was link grids, tap renewable resources everywhere. So large wind, large solar, could be solar on your rooftop, large geothermal, put it into the network. So wherever you put the switch, it's a clean electron as opposed to dirty. This is an interconnected grid that's about two-thirds built right now. Needs a lot of upgrading. There's a lot of pieces missing. Here are the benefits from this strategy. You link renewables between countries, tapping you know, uh, uh, the energy that we all need for our, for our quality of life, because electricity essentially provides our decent quality of life. If you live in San Diego, you had that experience about two weeks ago when the lights went off. And by linking across neighboring countries, you build trade cooperation. It's a peace strategy. We actually have seven Nobel Peace Prize laureates that have endorsed this strategy uh, as well. So it's a peace strategy and, and trade strategy between countries. It's hard to build infrastructure across political boundaries, let alone in the United States, between international boundaries. You get people electricity who's never had it before, just a little bit. You and I have 12,000 kilowatt hours per capita. They get by with half of that in Europe and, and Japan. You just get them up to 2,000. China just passed that number. You get them up to 2,000, you get them out of basic just a little bit, get some clean running water, a little bit of refrigeration for food and medicine. So that's the target, and to do it with renewables. So getting people out of poverty you know, and, and, and hunger and getting clean water. Um, so there's a, a development strategy at the same time. Uh, you get them out of basic poverty, there's a concept in the developing world called insurance births from World Health and UN. Uh, they don't have Social Security. So their Social Security for mom and dad is bigger families because hopefully one of them will stay alive long enough to take care of mom and dad later. Infant mortality rate versus electricity. Here's 2,000 kilowatt hours per capita on, the, uh, on this axis, and this is infant mortality rate. 50 is the number from, from Hunger Project and World Health that says once you go be below 50 infant mortality rate, you never go above again. So that's where you want to go, is below 50 in terms of child deaths. And doesn't it look like there's once you move up the ladder here, if you go from zero over to over 2,000, the whole thing shifts to below 50, and below 50 is up on this graph. So the goal is to get above the white line, and there's still a bunch. Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, China is now above that line. So that's the goal, is getting enough electricity so that now they can use it for clean water, um, and refrigeration and get them out of poverty. As electricity becomes available, then downward pressure on population growth. So four huge benefits from one strategy called linking movements.